Hello, just doing a quick video here to show you the most optimal settings for the RX 5600 XT uh, mining Ethereum and what settings my friend is running on his rig. So yeah, big shout out to my friend. He let me log into his rig uh, so I can show you what he is running here. So he's got a 8 card RX 5600 XT rig inside of Hive OS. It is showing that it is the MSI VBIOS. Uh, so these cards are actually what he said is the Sapphire Pulse 6 gigabyte RX 5600 XT cards, but because they have micron memory and they use the micron timings he flashed the uh the modded i would say like the the mining community modded rx 5600 xt micron timing uh v bios which basically just gives you the better straps and you can get an additional couple mega hash on your card so we're just going to go over his overclock settings here uh, so for most of his cards, he is running about 1400 megahertz on the core. Uh, for memory, he's got anywhere from 900 megahertz to 890, depending on stability. Um, for core voltage, he told me that he could only go as low as 700 millivolts. Otherwise, uh, like, yeah, you just couldn't go any lower. And the reason, I did a little bit of research on this, and the reason is uh, because you're not using the uh, native card VBIOS, as you guys know, you cannot mod the RX 5600 XT VBIOSes, they are locked, so luckily someone online, they were able to unlock and mod one of the MSI versions, uh, but basically, in short form, if you have an MSI RX 5600 XT and you mod the VBIOS using this modded MSI one, you will be able to go below 700 millivolts. But if you do not have an MSI card, and in this case he has the Sapphire Pulse 5600 XTs, uh, the lowest core voltage that he could set was 700 millivolts. Now, for memory controller voltage, he runs anywhere from about 700 to 735, depending on the card's stability. So what he said is you want to test each card. Well, I mean, I say this as well, but you want to test each card individually, find out what settings work. If it crashes, go back to that specific card, adjust one of the settings, and this is one thing I'll mention when overclocking the RX 500, 5000 series of cards. You've got a couple variables when overclocking. One, you have core voltage. Two, you have memory controller voltage. And three, you have memory voltage. So you have three variables here on why your card will crash. So that's where when you are overclocking and tuning these cards, you do need to have a bit more patience and adjust each setting individually. Of course, if you do not have the time, you're going to want to go with a lot less aggressive settings. So for example... You want to make sure your card doesn't crash. Maybe you leave 700 millivolts uh, for core voltage. Then you just do like 740, 750 memory controller and you just leave the memory stock or maybe 13, 1330 uh, works pretty well there. But if you want to really tune it in what he's done here, uh, what he did he just, is he started with the core voltage. Then he moved to the memory controller voltage, got that as low as possible without the rig crashing, so it ran stable. And then he moved on to the memory voltage, and then he lowered that to, uh, I believe here, some of his lowest cards, which it seems pretty impressive. He got it down to as low as 1260 millivolts. Uh, some of his cards here that crashed, they needed 1330 millivolts to run stable there. Uh, and then as well, memory clock is around 900 to 890. And I can quickly show you here what it looks like. Uh, when you have all the cards overclocked. So all eight cards, 1040 on the core, 700 millivolts for core voltage, memory controller voltage around 700 to 715, 735 there, memory clock 900, 890, and then the memory voltage, he's got nicely undervolted as well. Fan speeds, this is going to vary on what your card is. <laughs> as my friend mentioned, he has really, really good, uh, the Sapphire Pulse models, they have really nice big heat sinks, so he can run very low fan settings there as well. Power limit's not important, but he said he just wanted to be careful in case they did reset or the overclock failed that he would not burn out his PSU because I think he's running like one server PSU um, and this whole rig is probably my educated guess from having experience using these myself uh, probably pulling around uh, maybe a thousand to nine hundred and sixty watts for this entire rig so I don't know what that works out to each card, but I think he mentioned it's about 1,000 to 960 watts. But I can send him a message if you guys want. You can let me know in the comment section below, and I can reach out and ask him exactly what the power consumption is. And also, last note, in software, power consumption is always incorrect for AMD cards. And even NVIDIA cards, NVIDIA is pretty close to what the card actually draws. But the best way to measure power consumption is always use a kilowatt meter at the wall. That'll give you the most accurate reading for what your card is actually drawing. So yeah, overall, these are the overclock settings that my friend uses. And he achieves just over 41 mega hash across all his cards. And it runs pretty stable there. Uh, one last thing I'll talk about in this video is the profit.
profitability currently as of June 17th. So here, uh, ETH hash is getting about 41 mega hash, and I would assume about 125 watts at the wall. Uh, so daily, he's earning, I think he's mining on the EZL pool, so he's earning approximately $2.50 to $2.74 a day after electric of course maybe he's hodling maybe he's selling i'm not 100 percent sure what his strategy is uh, but all i know is he's mining on the easel pool and uh, he's having pretty good success there and um, the other algorithms that i guess you can consider mining on the 5600 xt if ethereum is no longer the top uh, top dog there in profitability is ethereum classic it is a little bit behind so a dollar 40 after power versus 274 so that's a big drop in percentage in terms of profitability as well i believe this card does all right on ravencoin but with ravencoin uh, these are the stock uh, minor stat settings it says you can get about 15 mega hash at 159 watts which i think the card's not really tuned well with these default settings but that does seem pretty high so yeah currently he's probably just going to continue mining on ethereum uh, but it will be interesting once the uh, Ethereum EIP-1559 is implemented, and if Ethereum profitability does drop, I'm just curious to see how this card will do on other algorithms. But anyways, I'm going to wrap up the video. Hopefully you learned something here. And uh, basically, just to summarize the video up again, uh, with the 5000 series of cards, you do want to tweak all of your voltage settings. You want to start first with your core voltage. Uh, probably want to set that around 700. If it crashes at 700, you bump it to 710. You run it. If it runs stable, then you move on to the memory controller voltage. Memory controller voltage, you can start with 700. If it crashes, you bump to 715, 725, 735 until it runs stable there. Once that's stable, you move on to the memory voltage. You start at 1300 uh, or Generally, when I'm undervolting, I like to start with the most aggressive setting first. So let's say I see one of my cards at 900 uh, megahertz can run stable with 1260 millivolts. I might immediately start with my card at the lowest setting. If it crashes, then I increase the voltage. Um, I mean, there's no right way to go about undervolting. You can either start high and, and slowly lower it down, or you can start low and move up until you find a stable voltage. But uh, yeah, you can see his rig's been running really stable here, about 333 mega hash, 332 mega hash. And uh, yeah, again, he is also using the Team Red Miner. So yeah, if you have any questions, you can put them down in the comment section below. I personally have a lot of experience uh, overclocking and undervolting with the 5000 series. Uh, if you have a question for my friend as well, you can put it in the comment section below and I can uh, pass it on to him. But anyways, big shout out to my friend. Thanks a lot for letting us log into your rig and uh, show the uh, RX 5600 XT undervolt settings. And uh, yeah, anyways, take care. Hopefully you learned something from the video. Bye-bye, bye-bye.